Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to today's webinar. We are going to talk about artificial intelligence, skull growth projection, and VTO. We are also going to show you how to use OutAccept for the purpose of planning, predicting, and simulating the treatment. Before we get started, I want to go over a couple of items of how you can fully participate in today's webinar. So if you want to click on, uh, if you want to go, have a full screen, please click in the right hand upper corner for the full screen. Also, we would really like to encourage you to ask questions during today's webinar. We are here to answer them and we will take time at the end of the webinar to answer all of your questions. You do that by clicking on the question and answer icon and this will pop up. You type in your question, we will get it and see it. Also, I want to remind you that this webinar is being recorded and that the recorded version will be up and running. You will be able to get it a couple hours after this, the end of this session. So before we get started, I just want to say a couple of things about Audux company. So we are based in Ljubljana, Slovenia in the European Union. We have been working in the field of dental informatics for over 25 years. We are the leading dental IT company in Slovenia. We develop our own patient management software and it's used widely in Slovenia. But we also put a lot of energy and effort into developing clinical applications such as OutAccept. OutAccept software is sold worldwide in over 90 countries. Today on the stage, uh, Peter Kobal, Hello. President Founder of Audex, and myself, Maya Bugatai, VP Sales, and of course you. Today's agenda, uh, we are going to show you the process from cephalometric analysis to skull growth projection and VTO. The emphasis will be on skull growth projection and VTO. Peter is going to show you a real case example. And at the end, we are going to take time to answer all your questions. So I, again, I encourage you, please send us questions. When we talk about OutAccept software, we talk about three different packages, Super Easy, Empower, and Ultimate. In Super Easy, you can do analysis for lateral x-rays, PA, and study model. Empower already employs artificial intelligence for automatic tracing, which is really awesome functionality. And Ultimate is the big package with all of the advanced functionalities an orthodontist needs in his or her practice. Today, like I mentioned before, we are going to talk about artificial intelligence with automatic tracing, skull growth projection, and VTO. Okay. Um, when we there are different abbreviations for the process of computerized planning and prediction. ATO stands for Adults Treatment Objective. VTO includes up to two years of skull growth. VTG means Visual Treatment Goal and can predict growth to maturity. Then there's also SDO and I don't know, lots of others. ATO is a subset of VTO and VTO is a subset of VTG. This is what we're going to show next. So sit back and enjoy the ride. Let's see the software. Here you go, Peter, hot seat is yours. Thank you, Maya. Okay, regarding those abbreviations, it's, um, it's um, I don't know. They don't, uh, they really don't matter. I started the software now, it's version six. And uh, I have here a paper of what I need to do. So the first thing that I'll uh, create is a new patient. And I'll uh, make, uh, I don't know, uh, what would be Lisa Simpson? Lisa Simpson. Uh, OK, so that it, everybody know that it's really um, like a Jane Doe person. She's a female. And uh, what I have here is a um, uh, new patient, so Lisa, and I can add documents here. So I'll make this smaller a little bit. There are two different ways of adding, uh, uh, adding um, uh, files to, to this field. I have here 
an option drag and drop or I can uh, add document uh, by by clicking by clicking this add document options but we'll not focus today on that uh, I will add a lateral x-ray and uh, I will add uh, additionally I will add um, an image lateral lateral uh, face no smile and I will add it here so we have two uh, documents uh, this one is um, this one is um, uh, of the same patient and uh, what I'm going to do I click that and I um, I uh, will uh, create a new analysis by the way this is version 6 it's uh, it has many uh, new features over version 5 and we'll see some of them today and um, what I got on the screen right now is um, one of uh, analysis types which are available. We have more than 200 developed, but we are not putting that into the package with um, installation because uh, it's, it could be really a lot of uh, files there and uh, nobody uses more than two, three different analysis types so you can download them at your will or ask us. So we have here uh, one example of analysis type. This, this can be changed. This color can be changed here. Uh, if you want to have it in brown color, you just select here a brown color or red one or whatever. I will use automatic tracing. So I hit the button here and uh, artificial intelligence, now I'm doing nothing, artificial intelligence traces all the points and uh, placed all the points on the screen. Of course, I can, I can move them a little if I want, if I do not agree with them, but um, uh, Generally, there, were, there are, I don't know, a few to move, but uh, everything here is okay. So, what I will do is um, I will show the report view. So, this is the tracing done automatically. And uh, what, I can, uh, what else I can do is uh, I can do a print. And uh, this is the result. So, from the, the x-ray to this, it, it, uh, it took me a few seconds. And... Uh, uh, of course, uh, if I save that, uh, then I can find another document uh, among uh, documents on uh, the first stage, the, the two ones that I, uh, that I had at uh, the beginning when I imported them. So if I go here back to documents, uh, there is uh, another document uh, analysis, and here is a tracing, I don't know, uh, PDF um, uh, report, then I have here... Uh, something like this. So I, I can copy that to clipboard. I can uh, start PowerPoint so that I copy paste this uh, into or if I open no no open I have I, I prepared one for a demo. Okay I will copy paste it here so control V and it's there I can move it to, to this position and um, I'm done. So I can uh, add also table of elements and so on. So you can easily copy paste different uh, things uh, such as, for example, uh, floating norms, uh, tracings and so on. So if I uh, go here again with control V, uh, I, can, I can make this uh, okay, here, for example. Uh, this can be used for a presentation or uh, for your um, e-files or, or whatever. But I would like to go on. This is not our focus, main focus today. Uh, what I would like to go, uh, do is uh, go back to the analysis. So I will go here. Please note that here is A, me standing for analysis only, A. Uh, there will be some other letters and I want uh, them to remember that because I will, I will return later to that. So let's go back to analysis and um, let's take a look at, um, at the left side. Uh, I have here analysis, which is uh, University of Ljubljana. It could be rickets, downs, uh, whatever. And uh, I have uh, this layer structure. Uh, if I, for example, switch off one layer, that layer disappears, is hidden. If I switch it on, it shows. Now, the same with, with analysis. For example, uh, having on analysis layer will show us all elements that are needed to be moved in order for the tracing to be done. If I switch on, uh, on and off all elements, it's very crowded. I can switch off and on radiograph as well. So, uh, 
layers work like that, that I uh, show what I want to show. For example, this table, or I want to have um, a measurement table on, on screen, or I want to go um, some measurement boxes here. And so on. So whatever I want to have, I just uh, switch it on. So on, off, and um, it shows me what I want to uh, what to want to look at. What I want to look at. Uh, one thing that I have is a VTO goal. I'll uh, come later to that. Uh, although it can be created on the fly during the VTO creation, uh, which is a new feature also inside the VTO in version six. So what uh, we have here is um, something I want these measurements to be within one standard deviation. So I'd like to study uh, what um, what uh, positions of that tissue uh, should be uh, should be related to other uh, structures uh, that uh, it falls inside one standard deviation. For example, I'd like to have plus one, so upper incisor to APG line uh, uh, here plus uh, on, on the mean two plus minus two um, uh, millimeters and so on. But I'll, I'll come to that later. Uh, the next thing um, that uh, I'd like to, okay, we can store that. Or we, we already did. The rest, next thing that I uh, would like to show is we are now in analysis module. Uh, then we can go to growth module and, or we can go to VTO module. And I will go to the VTO before you had to go out of analysis uh, module and start VTO module separately uh, inside the software, but now it's on the same canvas. So I will go uh, to VTO right now directly from analysis and I will skip the growth. We'll come to growth later. And what happens? Uh, I have now here analysis. So the first uh, set of layers is my initial tracing. Uh, the second set of layers, it's a copy of, uh, of the first analysis actually, is treatment plan. Is treatment plan. So um, if I, for example, switch off everything, there is nothing there. If I switch on the report layer of the first analysis, it's in um, uh, blue color. I can switch on, on top of it, a report layer of treatment plan. It's, uh, it's another color. And um, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to hover over some tissue. You can see that it changes color. So it becomes cyan color. If I go uh, over the tissue here, it becomes cyan color, but not whole mandible. I can select uh, tooth and move the tooth only, or chin and move the chin. I will select the anterior side of uh, mandible and, and move it forward. You can notice that below uh, there is that initial analysis. So you can compare my new, um, my new positions, everything with, um, with uh, the existing one, uh, which was uh, so the, the one that I traced at the beginning. So I did some movements and you can uh, see that uh, what I got here is um, uh, some information about the difference that movement. If I double click on that, I have delta x, it's uh, 2.6, then minus 2.2 .2 is on uh, y direction. There is no rotation. We can change also the font and uh, the size of the font of that delta box, so it, it's customizable. And um, what we can do also the same with the uh, with anterior part of uh, the uh, maxilla and uh, place it here. So I have that movement here um, uh, as well. What uh, you may notice here is that um, also when I moved uh, the, the hard tissue, soft tissue also moved a little. Uh, we studied a lot of literature. In different literature, uh, different uh, uh, soft tissue movements are proposed for certain move of, um, of heart tissue. And for example, in, in some, um, some books, if uh, one tooth moves for, uh, let's say incisor moves for a millimeter, then soft tissue will move for 66% of that millimeter, so 0.66 something, uh, in the same direction. 
but uh, it's like that. Uh, you are working with um, uh, people. We are different. Uh, we have different rigid, rigid uh, rigidity of um, of our uh, tissue, and uh, nothing. No one behaves the same way. So surgeons wanted us to give an option that they can change uh, the soft tissue. So I can we said, okay, why not? If I click that, uh, then we can we can move that in uh, in any direction, or I can I can close it here and and have something like this. So they know exactly when they do their surgery, they they uh, know in what way the patient will uh, or the tissue will move, or how how uh, uh, for what uh, scale it will move. And we said, okay, let's uh, let's do it in uh, that way. And uh, we gave them that option, and they are really, really happy with that. Now I'm going to add an image into that. So I, before I had an image, I will uh, add an image to to the tracing. So it's a lateral X-ray, uh, sorry, lateral photography, and I will place that uh, uh, rotation point. This is a rotation point on uh, pronasale, so I can rotate around that. And I will, of course, move it in, a, in this way so that pronasale is on pronasale and I, I, I can also grab a corner, make it smaller, bigger, whatever, and place the, that tissue, actually that image inside the, the tracing. I can play with, uh, with transparency. Okay, I'll, I'll make it um, that way. Uh, I say done and uh, of course uh, do the prediction so uh, let's do the calculation you can see that uh, that here we have some additional um, uh, tissue to be added and uh, initial photo will be uh, changed altered in a way that it will fit inside uh, inside the the um, proposed treatment uh, uh, silhouette um, one thing is um, also here important, we can uh, have here view states. So if I click here analysis, it will only show us analysis. If I click here VTO, it will show us uh, the VTO. Of course, I can click that off and this off and the uh, show image which was there before the treatment and uh, the one after the treatment. I'm not a surgeon so or orthodontist, I'm an engineer, so do not blame me for making that lady uh, look um, not so good, you know. So, um, at this point, I'd like to save uh, this. So, let's, uh, let's place that uh, back. I'll save that. And uh, what, what I can do right now is uh, we can go back to, to the documents and uh, take a look at, uh, and take a look at um, what we have. So we, what we got here is another document set. So if I go to documents, there is another document set. I said before there is A and now there is V as well. And um, that V stands that for VTO, so that VTO is done. And what we have here is... Uh, a set of uh, of uh, documents like like this one, or uh, or uh, a report for VTO, or floating norms for VTO, or wiggle chart for VTO. I can double click so that you can see that, uh, and you can um, actually you, you can actually superimpose one on top of of the other. But now what we did is I don't know what uh, because. Uh, I, I was not, uh, uh, I did not have any um, um, measurements. I don't know if I did that in the right way. So I'll go to documents. I'll go to documents. I will click the document and uh, I will duplicate it. So we can create another, we can create another, um, uh, let's say, uh, copy. And uh, I will open it. So now a copy is opened, and um, I'd like to show 
uh, other different movements. So one, uh, one option would be a rotation. I can uh, click on uh, that, so if I move that, whatever, this is something that we saw. Uh, the other uh, option would be that I say rotate, and I can rotate around, uh, um, around this point. I can move this point uh, somewhere here and do the rotation around, uh, around that. Uh, I can control click and do the rotation, ah, I, I, okay, it doesn't matter. I can control click and do the rotation uh, about some other point, or I can go here and I say, okay, do the rotation uh, uh, using the delta box. Always, I can reset that to zero so that we are in, uh, uh, in initial uh, condition. One thing that uh, can also be done is that we group together mandible and maxilla. Uh, the other thing uh, would be that uh, I can do some, um, some uh, auxiliary geometry and move some elements according to, to that auxiliary geometry. For example, I want to move um, first mandibular molar uh, in the in the direction perpendicular to uh, to to occlusal plane to initial occlusal plane so you can do that you can place a teeth and it's always perpendicular to that of course i'm not uh, going to uh, i'm not going to use that um, uh, but it's just for you to to know that uh, it is possible so you have all the set of uh, different tools here and uh, and you can uh, always you can always uh, use that for for different movements. And um, okay, what uh, I wanted to say in change rotation point, we can lock uh, mandible and maxilla. So if I click here, uh, you can see that I can play with that and uh, lock them together and move them together. I'm not going to save that. I will uh, clear uh, this. Uh, analysis and go back to, to documents. Now we are going to, um, to open, okay, this analysis. And uh, what I'll do is I will uh, show this and uh, I'll reset this one. And uh, I will reset this one. So uh, they are they are uh, back to let's say back back to zero. So this is in, this was this is something that uh, we had at the beginning. And uh, what I'd like to do is um, do another plan. So I I'm going to use a VTO goal. So I created here VTO goal in advance, but it can be created on the fly as well. And what I have here are some measurements. So it's uh, plus one to apogonion. Then I have plus, uh, so upper incisor to, it's two times. No, it's not, it's one millimeter, the other is in degrees, yes. So in, this is the distance, the second is the angle. Then I have plus one to selenazion, so upper incisor axis to selenazion. And I have interincisal angle. And uh, I can add additional ones. So if I double click, I will uh, give, for example, minus one I, so this one, I will add that. And uh, what I have is uh, minus one I to a pogonio, and it's two millimeters. Now I would like to place them all inside one uh, standard deviation. Uh, I will show all uh, the movements and I will put this one on uh, the video goal. And um, not this one, no, no, no. I would like to put this one to video goal. And uh, this one I don't need because I'm just going to do orthodontic movements. There's okay. a question you wanna- Yeah, there's there? a question? Yes, yeah. there's a question. What's the question? Uh, Yeah, is it possible to see safe values? Yes, they are on the report. So by default, 
uh, safe values, old one and new ones are on the report. Maya, please remind me, I, I will show that. When I finish that, I'll show, I'll show this one. Okay, so what I have is uh, I'll switch off that additional and I'll place that um, uh, to here and uh, I'll do some, some movement. So I will set this, uh, send this back and uh, you can see up there when I am moving that, that it changes uh, a little. And um, I will uh, place that to, for example, this one, two, three. I say, uh, okay. And uh, I will do the movements of that one to, for example, I will send this back a little. Okay, a little back. I'll do the rotation. I will change that. Now it's to something like this. Uh, of course, if this is stupid, then we can uh, we can change it because some uh, measurements are, of course, if I, for example, go in this direction, go in that direction, go in this direction, um, will exclude, will change. So plus one to selenazion is not something that I want. I want to do. Uh, rotation, I want to rotate it a little more, 106, okay. Oops. Now let's put that to zero and do the rotation. So, okay, I got something better because there was way out of, um, out of uh, our uh, plus minus three standard deviation and it is something like this and I'm for example, happy with that uh, situation. Now, when I did those changes, I can create an additional report. So I can, uh, for example, switch off the transparency. I will um, uh, create a report, name it my report, my report, and say OK. And uh, if I save that, uh, if I save that, it will be saved with, uh, with uh, uh, the document, so with that VTO. And uh, what uh, you asked before was um, to show the document, okay? So a report can be seen here from, uh, from the print. Hmm, just, we'll just wait for, for uh, the system to store that, so I, I do that print. And we have here old values and new values and old difference and new difference and bias is uh, made uh, uh, for the comparison with the standard uh, deviation with new uh, measurements on this analysis. Uh, she, she asked again, if you can see the old and new values on Ceph on the VTO screen while doing VTO and not in separate report card. Thank you. Of course. Yes, we can, we can show everything. So, uh, for example, if I go to layers, I have here measurement table. Okay, this measurement table is this one. Then I have a measurement table, which is measurement table here. So, well, what I have here, I put that on, on the side, on, on the other side. So this one are old values. Just let me let me let me remove VTO goal. Okay. So these are old values, and these are new uh, um, Yeah, these are new values. So you can you can uh, you can uh, have them all. You can see the difference here uh, compared to the difference here, and uh, it can be also as I said printed. It can be printed there and uh, you can see old values and you can see new values. I hope that this, uh, this answers the question. Uh, now, I'm, as I said, I'm not an orthodontist. I'd like to show a real case example.
So it was uh, this situation. So this is the initial photo and uh, this is the surgery plan and uh, they uh, forwarded maxilla uh, and they set back mandible a little and slided the chin. Uh, what uh, happened was this. So this is initial photo. Uh, this is prediction done by uh, Audexef and uh, this is final result uh, after the surgery. Of course you cannot do that with a kid who is I don't know 10 years old because after the end of the treatment uh, she or he will be, I don't know, 14, whatever, and uh, patients change a lot during that time. And uh, uh, I have three kids, you know, they, they are completely different than they were, I don't know, three years ago. And, uh, well, you know that, you know. But for adults, it's, it's quite a cool tool, you know. Uh, you can see how, how uh, these changes will be. And another thing that we have, here is an option, this is a movie, this is not, I didn't, I'm not doing that online right now. Um, you can take initial photo and final photo and do that, uh, what kind, I would like to say a transition between different uh, uh, photos in, um, um, in, in the, on different stages. So at the beginning or at the end of, uh, of the treatment, you can do an animation like this also. So this is initial and final and you can do that animation in between. It's a very nice tool to, to show to, uh, for example, economic buyers, okay, parents uh, who don't uh, believe you or they, they want to see how, uh, they want to see the results and so on. So it's very persuasive to to show them um, uh, such a movie uh, of uh, their kids, uh, they can see the progress and uh, they can in few seconds see the history, uh, the, the, the sacrifices that they had uh, uh, for in last years, you know. Okay, we'll, we'll close that. Okay, one uh, thing that uh, I'd like to show here is if I go back, I will go back and I will change uh, something in analysis. I do a change and I will delete the video. So I'm in initial analysis uh, again. Is that we can go from here, it's not necessary to go to video, we can use growth and say, okay, how will this patient look like after, let's say, few years, one year, two, whatever. And here is what Maya was uh, talking at the beginning, the um, uh, ATO, abbreviation, yeah. yeah, different abbreviations, they, they, are, um, they are, how would I say, useless, you know. You need to know what you want to do. So, uh, for example, some, some, um, um, People say, or, or um, different authors have different approach to that. We, we used Ricketts, and uh, Ricketts uh, made a methodology uh, that of prediction of growth from, from uh, any uh, age, for example, I don't know, uh, 11 years, to 13 or to, to 15. Uh, but because this is a girl, it will only take into account 3.4 years because that methodology uh, says that uh, the growth of the skull of the girls uh, ends at uh, year 14.8. End of course, it's different from different, um, um, for different um, uh, people and um, for, for boys it is more like 19 years and uh, that growth is allowed, growth prediction is allowed uh, to, to 19 years. Uh, what we can do is we can uh, also open or close, now I'm opening uh, facial axis here in between, or we can close it uh, on the other side and it depends on, uh, on the patient. I think it's plus minus uh, two degrees 
this calculation is about, I don't know, 250 different steps are uh, been done inside that um, ca calculating that um, uh, tracing and uh, computer is a perfect tool to do that manually if you do it for the first time I think you would need to three four hours to do that but this is exactly what you want from computer uh, to do such prediction I can also show um, NBA um, aligned registered at CC uh, NBA registered at NASION, uh, NASA line uh, aligned registered at ANS and, uh, and another superimposition and you can based on that superimposition bring some, some conclusions regarding the growth of the patient. Uh, of course we can export them all to the PDF, uh, an external software is started as a PDF viewer and uh, I will uh, make that smaller, okay? And uh, you can print that in one-to-one -one scale. So I print actual size and one millimeter on the paper, if I use that actual size option, uh, is uh, one millimeter in the nature, so on, uh, on the head. I will not print that. Hit close. And of course, from here on, we can go to, to VTO. And you can see that the growth was applied because there is a tick there and I can uh, do some movements and uh, you can know three different colors and uh, each one's depicting one, uh, one stage. So uh, this one would be initial analysis, growth and uh, VTO or we can put them all together uh, on, uh, on the screen. There's another question. Yeah. Uh, is automated set point identification and marking an automated alignment of photos possible or planned? I don't understand. Wait, we need to open that. I will. It's under chat. With chat. Oh, oh, you hover down, yeah. 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 No, I don't have it. Where is the chat? Okay, hold on, please. So, is automated self point identification and marking an automatic alignment of photos possible or planned? Okay. Maybe if it's planned in the future. Oh. Well, we, we actually do not plan to do that because it's really um, not done very often and uh, but yes, it could be done. I mean, it could be done. Uh, you know, with artificial intelligence, it's like that. Uh, you have to trace thousands of radiographs manually in order to, uh, to teach that um, uh, artificial intelligence box to find those points. And uh, we need to do a lot of tracings uh, of um, the of that photos and uh, and uh, uh, X-rays in order to align that uh, images uh, uh, inside uh, the software. So, but you know, it's it's quite easy. You know, if I go to 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 here and um, click a photo. You know, it's uh, it's very easy to to do that. You know, so to put that uh, to put that inside. No, I don't know. No, we do not plan that. To, it's not but a plan. Here she wrote automated set point identification, meaning the computer finds the points. But we have. Yeah, yeah, of course. Again, if I was not right, you know? if I was not uh, a very uh, specific, if I have a radiograph, so I will go to the beginning. I, I will use that lateral x-ray. Okay, we have to go to, to um, analysis again. Okay, uh, I will go to documents. Okay, I will click that. I will click new analysis. Now the points are around somewhere. Now I click automatic tracing, I wait five seconds, I do nothing, 
and the points are where they should be. Artificial intelligence. Yeah. So that artificial intelligence does it for you. You we can we can do some changes. Of course, we can. Or if I switch that on, we can uh, uh, place it like that later if we we think it's better. But yes, it it finds points automatically, so you don't need to trace one by one. But there is an option to do that manually as well. A question. Does this program include our net analysis? Yes. So uh, our net analysis is there. Will we need to calibrate the CEPH or standardize CEPH, the CEPH to have the right true vertical line? Well, it's, uh, it's always like that. If, if your, um, if your um, how do I say, uh, radiologist uh, places the, the patient in a right way, then, then uh, his position of his head will be vertical. And uh, true vertical line will be placed automatically. Uh, although, if I remember correctly, there is an option there that you can uh, put it to go through, through uh, subnasale or to move it away or, or, um, or slide it a little in one and in the other direction. We also have a tool so that we can uh, do the natural head position of, uh, of uh, the tracing. So there is advanced tool here. I think it's here. It's uh, x-ray tools and it's uh, natural head position. And uh, what I do is I will select this image. I will say OK. And uh, I will put that one to this and that one to, to, to the chin, so that we slide that in a way in like that. So people usually, when you take a photo, are in natural head position. But when they are in the machine, uh, that, um, that uh, different, uh, different types of um, um, stabilization of the head in the machine is in power, they usually are not in natural head position. So the idea is that uh, we take a photo of them and align the radiograph according to, to that image. And I would say, OK, and you, you saw that it rotated a little. So now it's in natural head position. But of course, in, in um, um, that, uh, our net analysis, there is a true vertical line which can be rotated. And uh, you, can, you can do that rotation. It is there but you can take a default vertical line as well. I think that I have a movie about our net and I can send it to you if you wish. What type of format does the CEF file has to be? We, we can uh, import um, any, any image. It can also be a DICOM image. It can be BMP, PNG, TIFF, whatever. So we can import any, any uh, um, format. We are now working on uh, on uh, uh, also importing 3D STL files so that you'll be able to to create uh, measurements of the study model as well. Okay, so I uh, I finished uh, this. What, what I would like to do is um, launch launch uh, Paul. Uh, and uh, there are some uh, questions there. Uh, I'd like you to answer. Do you, so do you need more information about, um, about Audax CEF? Uh, please uh, answer, answer yes if you want. We can send you uh, more information about that. Uh, I will for sure uh, come back with uh, that um, our net analysis so that you'll be able to, to see how it works. Uh, then uh, the second question would be, we are scheduling more webinars. And uh, the next one will be about the superimposition uh, next, uh, next uh, in, I think, in two, two weeks. OK? And uh, automatic tracing, images layouts, analysis type creation, and so on. Uh, then uh, how often would you use growth projections and VTO functionality? So if you have, uh, please uh, answer, answer these uh, 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 questions. 
it's good feedback for us. It's a good, yeah, it's a very good feedback for us and uh, we can uh, before we go on, we, Maya will then tell a few words about the, the um, maintenance, actually about the technical support you would like to talk mm -hmm. about. So technical support, oh good, we have some answers. Um, she'll, she'll talk about technical support because it's really important for you. We know that you are not uh, computer geeks and that you, you want to um, have us there when you need us and uh, uh, she will talk about this and then we have more questions you have that can you can you get and mm -hmm. uh, print them? Mm -hmm. Make a print, please. Make a print. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Make a print. Okay. Yeah. And, All right. Uh, please. Uh, can you? And we will uh, we will answer some questions uh, from uh, about that as well. Okay. Good. So, uh, Maya, can you uh, continue? I will. Mm -hmm. uh, I will exit the software. So, in the meantime, you still have a, a possibility to. We'll finish polling now so that uh, you can see the, the whole screen and polling. Thank you very much for your participation in that. So, uh, Maya, the hot seat is again yours. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay, hi again. Uh, this is just going to take a couple of minutes. Uh, I want to point out uh, an important key message about technical support, uh, just a second. As I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, we have clients in over 90 countries worldwide. And of course, we need to take care of our clients uh, very good, of course. And besides the top quality of our software, our number one priority at Audux is to deliver superior technical support. We, our workplace is set up in a way where we can productively help you with any technical issue you might be having with the software, regardless of the distance between us or the time zones that you are in. We use different online tools where we can successfully help you. It's almost like we're in the office next to you. And of course, we do this by trying to affect your work as little as possible. We also use different uh, tools. We have uh, self-instructing toolkits uh, free of charge and also we do online trainings. Our software includes an analysis type modeler, which means that you can create any analysis type imaginable, your own personalized analysis type, and we can help you do that also. So for us, it's extremely important that if you have a technical issue that you contact us uh, via email and we will help you with that issue straight away. And that is really important, the communication with our clients and that we help them ASAP so they can continue working with the software um, being disturbed as little as possible. This is about what uh, how we want to end, but we're also going to answer. We have quite some questions over here that uh, also we would like to answer. Yes, well, oh, um, okay, it's uh, stay, in, stay here. <laughs> so we have one, uh, one question about VDS. Uh, that's an interface used by uh, Verein Deutscher, Dem uh, Deutscher Dental Software. And uh, they developed an interface for uh, interfacing different softwares. And uh, there is a suggestion on, on, um, uh, from you that uh, you'd like to have that interface inside Audexf. And I think that it's uh, been developed uh, one week ago, something. Mm -hmm. So 
there is FAO DDS inside. Okay, then, then there is uh, pricing. There is always pricing uh, uh, question. Uh, we can, um, the pricing is on, on, uh, on the web page. So the software costs uh, 3,250 euro and uh, it includes uh, lifetime license. So the software will work uh, lifetime. And there is one year technical support included and uh, one year new versions and maintenance releases included. Of course, you may ask what happens after one year. After one year, the software will still work. And um, the only thing that will be different is that you will not receive new versions. But if you want, after some time, do an upgrade, we have uh, a, a possibility that, up, that you can upgrade your software to, to the newest version. So you don't need to buy it again. Uh, we can uh, talk about that uh, also on one-on-one uh, -on -one conversation, but uh, this is it. All, this, all the licenses are floating licenses. So uh, it means that if you have it installed on two computers in the network, if you have one license, you can run one license at the same time in the computer network. So you can share one license between different computers. Okay. Uh, the, the next is, um, yeah, what kind of computer is needed? Well, now it's a, it's a 2D ap application. It's not very, um, how do I say, um, CPU uh, demanding. So any computer will do, almost any computer will do. If you have Windows 10, it's, it's perfect for us. It will work perfectly. Uh, uh, one thing that is uh, probably more important than computer power would be, would be the option that you um, have a big screen, so a big monitor, uh, because the bigger monitor, the, the easier the work for you. Uh, then uh, we went through the formats. Okay, online training, we can do online training as well. So we can provide that online training uh, to you. We usually do it in two stages, let's say one hour at the beginning and after some time additional hour. And we know exactly uh, what is your uh, knowledge of the software uh, by your questions. But anytime we will help you because it's very easy to, to make a movie for us. And uh, usually people have the same questions all the time and uh, we, can send out, uh, we can send out these movies to you or links to those movies or to webinars so that you can uh, see how it uh, works. Another thing, we have a uh, uh, training toolkit. It's not user's manual. It is, okay, there is a manual, you can read that through, but it's not a user's manual. If you read that through and uh, use the files that are in that uh, package together, you will know almost everything about uh, the software and configuration and, and uh, even things that you don't need. Then we have, um, yeah, German VDS interface possible? Yeah, yes, yes, it is possible, it is there. So it is developed, it's inside the software and uh, it works, yes. Uh, Okay, that's okay. There is another question: Can you lease the software for one year? Well, we discontinued that, so we can only buy a lifetime license. So, are there any any more questions? Also, in a day or two or a week, if questions pop up, please send us an email. We are here to help. Uh, you can send any time and we will answer your question. Yeah. You can also schedule an online meeting if you would like to discuss uh, uh, that we show part of the software again or something. Just let us know. Communicate with us and send us an email, please. Yeah, well, we would like uh, to invite you to Cephalometric Superimposition webinar. This, is, this one's going to be really, really interesting, really interesting, because we will we'll show automated um, uh, superimpositions 
and uh, we show also structural superimpositions, which are suggested by American Board of Orthodontists, by European Board of Orthodontists, also in Australia, and it's going to be really, really interesting. The, the methodology was uh, first, I think, described by, by uh, Björk, and uh, it's very widely used, and um, it's going, we, we, are, we are going to have fun, I mean, really fun. And um, we will also cover some uh, schematic uh, ways of doing that, uh, superimpositions, and uh, it, will be, it will be great. So, uh, please uh, join us. There is, uh, on, I think on, on our web page, there is, um, there is uh, .com. So you can sign up for the webinar here. So here is Maya, you can uh, listen to her. <laughs> but here is uh, sign up for the webinar about cephalometric superimposition and you are very uh, welcome uh, to join us uh, in uh, two weeks. Yes, February 12th is when this webinar is going to be presented. So and we're planning to have it. Yeah, we have some uh, thanks here. Uh, I'm very happy that uh, you enjoyed the webinar. So. If there are any additional questions, you can uh, come with the questions or you just uh, send us an email uh, on, um, on, uh, on this, uh, on this uh, site or on this email there and uh, we'll try to answer as soon as possible. So, thank you for now and uh, have a good um, uh, week and bye-bye. Thank you. you. Bye. Bye-bye.